Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to climb all the way up the ship's superstructure on the inside and talk about the different rooms that are there and, and why they're there. The museum is currently closed uh, because of the ongoing pandemic. We have not been able to raise enough money to stay open. So for the next six months, most staff, including myself, are furloughed. During this time, uh, we are continuing to put out YouTube content. Thanks to the contributions that viewers like you have made on our GoFundMe campaign. Check the description down below for the link to that campaign. We're trying to reach $30,000 right now in order to uh, continue to pay a staff member to come in and film me uh, volunteer to give these videos and then to edit them and post them and uh, monitor your comments on them. Uh, so if you like what we're doing and you want to support the museum, please consider sharing or contributing uh, at that link. Let's get started. We are currently on the O3 level. This is the flag bridge where the Admiral would command the ship from. Uh, and you can look all the way down to main deck here. Uh, and this is the last point for five stories where we're going to be outside. So we're going to go step inside the uh, forward fire control tower and then start climbing up. Over here is the signal flight shelter, which is only accessible through this exterior door. But this is the space that we're restoring to try and have open uh, when we reopen in six months. Across to it is uh, originally part of the Admiral's flag bridge, uh, and it was converted for Tomahawk missile computers and uh, safes where they would have stored the fire control solutions. Uh, that's another space that if you guys donate enough money, we might be able to open up so people can go in there. The higher up in the ship we go, uh, the more top weight it is and the more it makes the ship want to roll over. So uh, there isn't a whole lot of armor plating as you go higher up. Now here you can see the door and the bulkhead is over an inch thick. That's more to support the weight above us. But as we go up, it gets considerably thinner. Up here on the O4 level, we have some birthing spaces. Well, what was once a birthing space and is now an air conditioning space, the AC was added in 1982 and they had to convert older spaces into it. Seems like this might have continued to be a head for the bridge, which is forward through here. Not all of the Iowas have this cut through that allows you to go from the fire control tower through to the bridge. And this space is listed as the SB radar room. This, this was maintained by the fire control men. You can see some sailor art left over here. So now we're up on the O5 level of the superstructure. And this space was converted into the control room for the SPS-49 air search radar. When the ship was decommissioned, uh, the Navy came through and gutted all of the equipment in here uh, so that it could no longer be used. You'll notice empty cabinets and cut up uh, equipment all over the place. We are trying to restore rotation to the SPS-49. 
Um, and some of the critical control equipment is right here. Fortunately, the folks at the uh, shipyard that decommissioned the ship, uh, they didn't put in that much effort, honestly. The cabinets that they could easily open were opened and gutted. This one right here, which is a drawer that pulls out, uh, could not be pulled out because of the cover on this fluorescent light fixture. Uh, and so when we started this project to restore the SPS-49, uh, we removed that cover and we opened this up and we found that all of the critical electronics that we needed were still intact in there, thanks to the laziness of some yard bird. Uh, so that has allowed us to continue to progress with the SPS-49 project, and that's yet another project that we would like to have wrapped up in six months when we reopen, uh, if you guys can support us. Again, we have more uh, air conditioning equipment. We've got electronics here. We've got to keep it cool. It was all added in the 80s. And there's an exterior door that takes us out to the 05, near where the super rapid booming all four chap launchers are, or Serbach. That's another exterior door on the opposite side. And it looks like this is more equipment relating to the SPS-49 and uh, the air conditioning system that supports that. Uh, let's see, anything else in here of note? Pump room. So it's probably pumping chill water through the air conditioning system. So there are 1,100 spaces on an Iowa-class battleship. Um, and even though I'm the curator of the museum and I've been here for three years, I don't know what all of them were for. Um, fortunately, like my predecessor always used to say, let the ship talk to you. So uh, the ships were designed to be operated by crews that rotated out and were replaced with new people pretty frequently. So absolutely everything is labeled. You just have to know where to look. So every frame has a stencil on every pipe tells you what it is and what direction it's going. Uh, and frequently at or by the door, you've got a compartment checkoff list that one lists all the equipment in there, but two tells you what the uh, compartment is called numerically. So you can look it up in a blueprint uh, and its actual name. So between that and the labels on the equipment, it's usually pretty easy to figure out what a space was for. All right, so now we are at the 06 level. Uh, and this level, we have uh, the highest birthing spaces that are still on board. We will get to a space that's higher that was once used as a birthing space, but it is not anymore. So these are officers' birthing spaces in here, and I believe they are overflow birthing for when the ship carried its design flagstaff. Uh, when you get a bunch of officers on board for the flagstaff, well, suddenly you got to storm in places. Uh, and you would never assign someone from the ship's company this far from the wardroom. Uh, it's kind of pretty far out there. So I think it was for flag staff and guests and that sort of stuff. So we got the stateroom here. And a commode and sink here in the uh, forward half of the space. And then, see curator for access. A 
That used to be me back when uh, we had money to pay staff. This is the only door like this on the entire ship. And I've worked on a number of museum ships and I've visited most of them in this country. I've never seen another door like it. Crossing over to this side, you can see on the aft face, we have another officer stateroom. And on the forward face is a shower. Apparently the bulkhead connecting the toilet on the other side to the shower on this side is structural to the point that uh, they weren't willing to put a door there. So now we're on the 07 level. Uh, and up here we've got more air conditioning equipment. And at the back end we've got an air conditioner built around a workshop. No idea where the light switch is for in here. And uh, more workshop spaces here. I could not see what this was with you sitting in the doorway. It is an empty room. Mm -hmm. With a door that's blanked over. Curious. You can see that there was some gutted equipment here, probably part of a radar system. Uh, and you can tell this space was for electronics because it has a rubberized linoleum deck. So now that we're on the 08 level, we've got another steering position for the vessel. We'll go in there in a second, but first let's check back out. So this used to be a second at sea cabin for the captain on the 08 level because we have a conning station right there where the ship could be conned from. Uh, so if that was the case, the captain would sleep back here. As you can see, it is no longer a berthing space. Uh, this space has been completely gutted, reinstalled as an office space for weather monitoring equipment. This is part of a two-story uh, weather structure that was installed in the ship. Uh, infamously, the ship was the flagship of Admiral Halsey during Typhoon Cobra in which a storm was misplotted and then Halsey drove all of Third Fleet through it, losing uh, a number of men and the vessels they served on. And uh, weather tracking information is important and is something that is done on many ships now. Uh, New Jersey's suite by the 1980s was very, very small and very much an afterthought, even when she was being used as a flagship at that time. Here we are in the 08 again. Uh, you've probably seen this in some of our other videos. But this is a space where we can con the ship from. It's got great visibility, but very little armor plate. 
We've got all the normal control features here. And then aft uh, of it is a chart house, just like at other steering positions. visibility conning station, we are now eight levels up. So this is inside of the forward funnel. The top of the funnel has been plated off while the ship was in dry dock uh, as part of the mothballing process. Uh, otherwise, this is just here so you can come up and inspect this space and make sure the steel isn't corroding. Because if the steel corrodes, well then water gets in and it can drop. We're like 13 stories above the engine rooms here. So this is the second story of the former weather office. Um, based on the rubberized linoleum decking, there used to be electric equipment in here relating to that. We can see a lot of big 220 power lines coming through here. Uh, not quite sure what used to be here for that. This black thing overhead is the waveguide for our radar. And here's a smaller waveguide for a different radar. So by this point, you're probably seeing a lot of common features. We've got electronics and the air conditioning to support it. We've got uh, radar support features and we've got command and control spaces up here. Also see uh, as we've been going up the big round tube in the center of the fire control tower. That is uh, the wiring trunk through which all the electronics for spot one, the forward main battery fire control director, uh, go. So that is an armored tube that uh, provides some structure to the tower here but also holds all the wiring for the more important equipment up above. By the time New Jersey was built, radar was an integral part of the design, but it was a brand new concept at the time. Uh, and so it was originally envisioned that like older battleships, 
New Jersey would fire her main guns and then the crew high up in the superstructure where we are now on the 09 level would be able to spot the fall of shot uh, from these guns so they could adjust their aim accordingly. Uh, as it turns out, radar did become good enough within the development of the Iowa class battleships that uh, spotting the fall of shot visually was unnecessary and you could fire much further than you could see even from uh, the top of a nine story building where we are right now. So at some point, this area, which is set up for a crew to sit with binoculars and sit on these uh, looks like oak stools and put on a sound powered headset and plug into these phone jacks that you see all over here. And then they can call back to fire control from looking through these view slits where the fall of shot's coming. Well, that's not necessary. Uh, our air search radar, our air search radar, can pick up the explosion of a 16-inch shell. It's that uh, sophisticated. So our surface search radar can definitely see where our shells are landing relative to a target we're firing at. And so this position became completely redundant. Uh, and because we're so high up in the ship, they never found another use for it. They blanked over these viewports, uh, probably at some point when she was going into mothballs, and then they never decided to open them back up again. Uh, interestingly, they did leave all the equipment here, the shelves, the stools, uh, everything that was once part of spotting fall of shot. And I imagine that, uh, well one, that, that's weird because they keep adding electronics to these ships and that keeps causing top weight issues. So the more weight you can remove from higher up in the ship, the more stable she becomes. Uh, but nobody ever came up here to find this stuff. I suspect the crew up here kept it as their hangout spot uh, and nobody told their officers who probably never came up this high that uh, this was even here. And the room does wrap around to this side of the tower and there is a second ladder up. Almost all of the spaces on the ship uh, and all of the spaces going up the superstructure here have two ladders. The reason for that is you might have the one watch crew have general quarter stations somewhere else. And so when they are going to their general quarter stations, the guys coming down and going aft on the ship are using the port side and guys going up and forward on the ship are using the starboard side. And so one set of ladders is for people going on watch and another set of ladders is for people coming down off of watch. Uh, you'll also notice the uh, black tubing here, which was part of the dehumidification system added when the ship was mothballed. Uh, in most of the spaces that are open as a museum, it's been removed. In spaces like this that are really far off the beaten path, it is still in place. Now we're in the O10 level of the superstructure. As initially built, the superstructure terminated right here. But during the Vietnam Commission, they cut this hole and added uh, this space outboard of that, which was for holding electronics countermeasure warfare equipment. And again, you see rubberized linoleum deck you see air conditioning system. And here you can even see out into a void between where that framing ended and uh, the edge of the ship. Now New Jersey was the only Iowa reactivated in the 1960s and she's the only one that received this type of superstructure modification. The other three Iowas reactivated in the 80s received a more aerodynamic uh, superstructure which was used for the same feature uh, just, it looks different. So if you want to see something like this, you've got to come to Battleship New Jersey. I 
imagine this was uh, storage equipment or a workshop. Uh, ECM room number one. That's electronic countermeasures. This is part of the original superstructure, although I'm not sure that the hatch there is original. Might have been added later on in the ship's career. There was clearly electronic equipment here at one point, but not today. Uh, although this rack might have held some. Now it holds the viewports that are no longer needed because they've been blanked over down below. And here's another storage closet. And then uh, on the forward face there, Looks like some air conditioning vents. And again, this is where the original superstructure terminated and was cut through. And here is part of those um, elephant ears that were added to the side of the superstructure. And if you look back at the superstructure, you can see here is the curve of the original, the original viewport, uh, and then you can see the prefab welded structure that was added on uh, in 1968 and then retained through the 80s. This is an air compressor, which is part of our uh, whistle that we still use, the ship's horn, and uh, originally it would have run off of steam created in the ship's boiler room. And we have uh, modified it to run off of compressed air so we can still sound the ship's horn. So now we're on the O11 level of the superstructure, and uh, this space is essentially the base of the fire control director spot one, which if you want to climb up there. It's also access to the exterior part of the O11. So here's the ship's mast with the radar antennas on top of it. Here's that hatch we saw down on the O10 level. This is the Slick 32, which is a modern 1980s era uh, electronic countermeasure system that was added to the ship in 82. Uh, it is a contemporary system that is still used on Navy ships. From here, you can also look down and see the funnel we were in and the rest of the ship below us. Here you can see the original windscreen as part of the structure up here where lookouts would be. Uh, and you can see that this used to be squared off. As built, this was the air defense warfare platform. Uh, so there would be reclining chairs that uh, lookouts would sit in with binoculars to watch uh, for aircraft. And then they could prioritize those aircraft as targets and send that information to the directors below to actually get range and bearing information for the guns. Uh, if you want to learn more about what those chairs look like, check out this video that we filmed on board USS Slater. Now, because the space was pretty tight, uh, and because the air defense warfare officer on the ship was a lieutenant commander and had some weight to throw around, uh, eventually, by, before the end of World War II, they extended it out in a cross shape, which you can see from the world mark. And then, of course, in 1968, they add this whole structure down on the O10 level and extend it to the current uh, configuration that it is now.
forward here we have a uh, satellite communication antenna, often called the trash can antenna, and forward of that is the ship's steam whistle. Uh, up until at least 1986, the steam whistle was mounted on the superstructure. And it seems like throughout the ship's career, it flip-flopped from one side of the superstructure to the other uh, until the late 80s when it was mounted forward of the uh, antenna there. Here's our other side. So thanks for watching this tour of the battleship superstructure. Uh, if you would like to see some of these spaces, they are mainly off of the normal tour route, but with a curator's behind the scenes tour, uh, which we'll link in the description down below, you can sign up for yourself and a handful of guests to come up through some of these spaces with uh, me or someone else from the ship's curatorial staff uh, and see these for yourself. Uh, remember, if you would like to support the museum, check the description down below for ways you can do donate to our GoFundMe campaign. If you have questions or comments about what you saw, uh, check the comment section down below. Uh, we try to get back to people there pretty quickly. And as always, remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we put out new content. Even though the museum is closed, uh, the donations you guys have made to us so far are allowing us to continue to put out new content several times a week. Thanks for watching.